So if you're anything like me, you probably spend a lot of time on the internet window shopping for cars and parts for the car you already have that you probably still don't need. And what always comes next is I go, ooh, I need some cool carbon fiber bits for my car. So then I go on the internet, I find the part I want, I see the price, and I realize, hey, I need another job to pay for that. Well, the good news is there might be a better way. And by better, I mean worse in almost every way, but at least it's cheaper, as long as you consider your time worthless, which begs the question why I'm doing this again. But hey, back on track. The goal of this video is to be a candid response to the question, can I make forged carbon fiber parts at home? Paul from Easy Composites has a great video on the subject that I'd highly recommend watching after this to learn a bit more, but let's jump right in. Let's talk about why you might want to forge carbon fiber part over a more typical carbon fiber weave component. At face value, it's less strong than woven carbon fiber and arguably less aesthetically pleasing, but just because it isn't as strong doesn't mean it isn't still a strong material that can produce lightweight and functional parts. If done correctly, the main benefit of forged carbon fiber is that the strength of the part is more or less uniform. An example I like to use for this is a piece of paper. Woven carbon fiber would be your regular flat piece of paper. It's a great 2D part. It's strong when you try and pull on it lengthwise, but it can bend and tear pretty easily because it's a thin 2D part. However, if we crumple that paper up and we were to suspend it in epoxy, we now have a part that has uniform strength in all directions and we can make more 3D parts with it. Let's really briefly talk about mold design. There's a ton of information out there about this and I am not an expert, but there are a few key things I wanna point out that you do wanna be sure to incorporate into your mold and then you can tweak and improve as needed. So the first important one here is this extended wall. And you can see that both on the top and the bottom where I have the positive of that. And that's gonna give us a little bit of extra room to compress the material and allow the material to overflow just a little bit on the bottom here and then be compressed into that mold half because that extends a little bit further than the part itself. The second thing you wanna pay attention to are draft angles. These are angled walls that allow you to remove the part more easily. Now my part itself didn't really need any because it's cylindrical like that. These walls around here are already angled, but these here are all angled and you wanna shoot for two to three degrees on this kind of mold. The last thing you really wanna pay attention to and add a few of these in are release features or ejectors. So on this one here, I only added one. I added this little edge here that allows you to get a tool in there more easily without damaging the mold and pry things apart. I should have added more. And one other thing you could add is a threaded hole in the bottom here. And then you could thread a screw into that before you cast it. And then when it's done, you can tighten that screw and pop the part out really easily. And then you'll have just a little bit of post-processing work to do to get rid of any marks that that leaves behind. I made this quick spreadsheet for calculating out the carbon fiber ratios. So here we've got the density of carbon fiber and that's what Paul recommends in his video. And then I grab the part volume from CAD. So I have a positive of my part here and then I can just grab the volume and convert that to the correct units. And then this here is the weight of the final part after it's been cast using that volume and density. 60% of that is the fiber. So then we can calculate the weight of the fiber that you need to measure out here. And then the weight of the epoxy is given here, but you're gonna need a little bit more than that. Um, I poured out about twice what I needed and I ended up throwing some away, but I definitely used more than that 39 grams there. And that's because you're gonna pour in a lot when you pack the mold. And then a lot of that's gonna squeeze out as you compress that carbon fiber. So 
the next thing I'm going to do to prep this mold is using this mold release wax. And I'm just going to give this a thin coat on the inside of the mold. It's going to do two things. One, it's going to let us remove the part pretty easily. And then two, it's going to coat the inside and smooth out some of those ridges we get from 3D printing so that hopefully we get a smooth finish on the top. All right, next up is prepping our core. So that is this piece here. So this is what interfaces with the shift lever. And then this up here, we have this little, uh, just a shift pattern. This next bit is just me pouring out the carbon that I'm going to use and make sure I have the correct weight. And I'm no expert, but rumor has it the fancier the cup you use, the better your end result is. Once I've got the carbon weighed out, I can move on to the resin. And the one quirk I found with this kit, which I'll have linked in the description, is that it was labeled as a two to one ratio epoxy resin, but it didn't say whether that ratio was by weight or by volume, which was a little odd considering some of the other epoxy resins I've used that do specify that and often have different ratios if you're doing it by weight or by volume. Luckily, it is labeled on the containers what the weight of each container is, and so I could figure it out by the labeled weight but I struggled with that for a little bit. That's the only problem I've had with this kit though. Other than that, I've been happy with it. Now that I've got the materials ready, I can start filling the mold. So step one of that is to give it a nice thick coat of epoxy on the inside surfaces of the mold. That's gonna help fill any voids and just give the carbon a nice surface to stick to on the exterior of your part. Once everything is ready, you can finally start filling the mold, and this part here was by far the hardest and the messiest. I did a few things wrong here that I think would have made it a little bit easier, one of which is you really need a dry hand to pick up the carbon and put it in, so try and keep one of your hands completely free of any resin, and try to keep resin out of your bin of dry carbon fiber. The other thing that I think would have helped was trying to keep carbon out of the resin cup. So keeping the carbon and resin as separate as possible really would have been helpful. Otherwise, it's just a mess and you're trying to get carbon in and it's already covered in resin before you can even place it in your mold. To fill the mold, you're just gonna sprinkle some dry carbon in thin layers, and then you're gonna kinda of dab that with the paintbrush and coat it with epoxy. And then you're just gonna keep doing that layer by layer until the mold is full. It's gonna seem like you have a lot more carbon than you can fit in there, but I promise it will all fit. You have to pack it in, and it's gonna be kind of a heaping pile, which is why we added that extra little bit of sidewall on the mold. So then once you've got all the resin in there, then you can move it over to your vise or put it in your clamp so that we can compress that and get the real forged carbon, squeeze all that extra resin out of there. And the last step is to go ahead and clamp our mold and give it that compression that's gonna squeeze all of the resin out. I just used a small bench vise for this. Um, I designed those holes in for half inch bolts and then didn't use them and kind of regret that because I actually ended up putting a bolt through one of the holes to help squeeze it shut and it was a lot easier than trying to use the vise and these C-clamps. I don't have it on film, but I actually snapped one of these C-clamps in half and how that broke before my mold did, I have no idea but the bolts would have been a much easier solution. The other thing you have to be careful of is you wanna gradually close this over the course of 
10 to 30 minutes. If you try and do it all at once, you're just going to blow your mold out because that resin isn't going to have time to squeeze its way through the gaps and fall out of the bottom of the mold. So you want to make sure that you do this gradually and give it a little bit of time to close fully. I have to admit, at this point, I was not feeling hopeful about this project. Uh, you can see on the right there, there's some carbon that's stuck in between the mold halves. And that's just because it was difficult to get it all into the mold cavity. So a little bit came out through that. And it was really hard to close the mold. Um, at this point, I just I was worried that the resin was even going to cure. And I just was not hopeful for the state of this project at all whatsoever. Okay, so the first step is getting the part out of the mold. You can see I actually got the bottom half off pretty easy other than I sheared off these two bolts right here, uh, but that's not really an issue. And then if we take a look at the side of the part, you can see the carbon is kind of folded over the edge of the part. And that's not because of a misaligned mold, it's actually folded over that ridge we built in. So I ended up having to take a chisel and chisel along that edge there to get the part all the way out. The one thing I do have to be really careful of is this joint right here. So I can't pry the part too hard because that core inside of there is 3D printed with the layer lines oriented this way. And so if I pry too hard, I will shear that off at the layer line where that carbon meets the aluminum and it'll just pop that piece right off. As you saw, I did end up shearing that part off. Uh, I wasn't too surprised. It was pretty hard to get out of the mold, so I wasn't surprised that I had cracked it like that. The fix I ended up using was to find two long nails and heat them up and melt them into the sides of the plastic. And then I trimmed them a little bit. I did the same on the top and I pushed them together and then I epoxied those pieces back together so that there are two metal rods holding it together as well as the epoxy. Once I had the handle back together and had trimmed off all of the excess carbon, which was surprisingly hard to trim by the way, it is very tough and I can see where it gets its strength from, I could start actually doing the post-processing work. So I started this with a thick coat of epoxy that's just going to fill in any gaps or holes in your base coat. You will have less of these the better the mold you use, but uh, I did have a few small artifacts that I just filled with a thick coat of epoxy around the outside and the coating was really wavy and bubbly, but I'm going to sand this down next. So I started with 150 grit. I went to 300, 600, 1000, 1500, and 2000. I am by no means an expert here and you probably could have gone in smaller increments, but that's what I had on hand that was easy. So that's what I did as far as sanding. And then once I was done sanding it, I put a layer of plastic primer on. Uh, I would love to say that this is because I wanted the clear coat to bond better to the epoxy, but it's because I grabbed the wrong container with a clear lid on it. So uh, be careful what you pick up. And then finally, I went with a clear coat, uh, just a regular off the shelf clear coat. I did four to five coats of that, and then I gave it a while to harden before I did anything else. I did try and sand and polish this clear coat. Uh, like I said, I'm not an expert in this. I ended up actually sanding almost all of the clear coat off and I think I just started at too low of a grit. So I just restarted the sanding process. I did it all over again and then I clear coated it and I left it. I didn't touch it after I put the clear coat on the second time. It looked pretty good and I didn't touch it but you are more than welcome to polish it if you're comfortable doing so. So I think I've pretty well answered the question, can you make carbon fiber parts at home? With the answer being yes, uh, I think my part came out pretty good, especially being a more complicated part like this shift knob is with a core and a couple composite pieces that aren't carbon fiber. I'm pretty impressed with how this turned out for doing it at home with a 3D printed mold. Would I do it again is probably another question. And I don't know that that answer is yes. It's a pain to do, it's really messy, and the post-processing is a lot of work that, frankly, I'm not good at or really patient enough for. So whether you want to take this on yourself is up to you.
I did not expect for this to break before the plastic broke, but it did. Yeah. Mommy's supposed to go to the bathroom. Like immediately? But I'm hoping that that smooths out some of these 3D printed. Bro, how long is this song? Oh my god.